Hey y'all, so I'm back with another DIY and this time I'm gonna show you guys how to do a DIY thermal protector. So that's like a heat protector for when you're styling your hair with heat. So when I was coming up with this recipe, I was researching a lot of ingredients that have thermal protectors in them. And these are some of my favorite that I came up with. So usually with my DIYs, I tell you guys that you can like uh, fluctuate the ingredients here and there to kind of uh, customize it to your hair texture but in this recipe you want to stay true to the recipe because if you add too much oil in uh, your thermal protector it's gonna have the opposite effect so instead of do being a thermal protector it's actually gonna start causing a lot of heat damage to your hair so stay true to the recipe and then of course like the best way to apply it is in a spray bottle because it just gives you an even application so this thermal protector you want to use on wet hair only a lot of the commercial thermal protectors you can use on wet and dry hair but I don't recommend it I recommend using this one on wet hair only so when you come out of the shower you're gonna towel dry your hair and like squeeze all the excess water out because if you have too much excess water in your hair it's gonna dilute the thermal protectors like look how shiny my hair is from it I didn't put anything else in my hair except this so one of the main ingredients that adds a lot of shine in this formula is grapeseed oil so grapeseed oil we're not putting too much of it we're only gonna add um, a teaspoon or so um, if you don't have grapeseed oil you can also use avocado oil or almond oil but I like grapeseed oil because it actually has a lot of heat tolerance. So it can tolerate a lot of heat all at once. And it's such a light oil. It's not heavy or greasy. Like you can see, it's actually so liquidy because it's not a very dense oil. So it's not like a thick layer on top of your hair. And then of course, one of the main ingredients in this formula is gonna be aloe vera gel. I'm using 100% pure aloe vera gel and this is the one that you can take internally. It's basically like straight out of the leaf and put into a bottle. Uh, you don't want to get the topical kind because there's stuff added into that so you want to use either the edible kind or like straight out of the plant. Aloe vera gel is basically like as light as water so for those of you that have really fine silky or even oily hair don't get turned off with the amount of aloe vera gel in this formula because it's it's super light and it's not going to feel heavy or greasy in your hair like a lot of the oils would. And then to thicken up our recipe, we're going to be adding cornstarch. You can skip this part if you like. I just like it because it binds everything together because there are oils and there are water-based products in this formula. The cornstarch kind of combines everything together because oil and water tend to separate. Um, by adding the cornstarch, it just kind of keeps everything to a nice creamy consistency. And then you can go in with some essential oils. Uh, a couple of my favorite for this recipe are lavender or tea tree. I'm gonna be sticking to tea tree for this recipe because it has a lot of thermal protecting properties in it. So another ingredient that we're gonna be using is shea butter. And this is one of my favorite ingredients for DIYs. It's almost in every DIY that I use for hair formulas because it has the same structure as a lot of the silicones in a lot of the commercial products out there. So it's a great thermal protector. It almost creates like a barrier on your hair and it leaves your hair feeling really, really soft and silky. And if your hair is super, super fine or like really, really uh, oily or greasy, you wanna add a little bit less of the shea butter because it is quite heavy. And to be honest, any way I can get shea butter into anything that I use in my hair, I sneak it in. And there's only about a teaspoon of it in this formula, but it makes a world of difference. So for those of you that have really thick, frizzy hair like me, sneaking shea butter into anything that we use is great. But those of you that have really, really fine, silky or oily hair, you can definitely skip the shea butter if you feel like your hair can't handle the weight of it, but there's only a teaspoon in there, you won't even feel it. Like there's only one teaspoon in this entire bottle. Um, and this is about one cup. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make this. Let's get started. In a mixing bowl, we're gonna start with one teaspoon of 100% pure shea butter. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of grapeseed oil. And then we're gonna go ahead with one fourth of a cup of aloe vera gel. And then I'm just smashing it together just to get it started. And then I'm gonna add one cup of boiling or hot water, just enough to melt all of the ingredients together. Once that's stirred together, we're gonna go in with any essential oil that we choose. I'm going with a tea tree oil. And then we're going to add one tablespoon of cornstarch. And you wanna stir constantly and very quickly to avoid lumps. So once that's all combined together, you're gonna to pour it into your spray bottle and give it a nice little shake and you're done. And now I'm gonna be applying it on a towel dried hair. So my hair is shampooed and conditioned and towel dried. 
and I'm just spritzing it evenly in between all of the layers of my hair from roots to ends and it smells so good. And I'm gonna go in with my blow dryer. So before I go ahead and start round brushing my hair, I like to remove about 50% of the moisture from my hair. It just makes the styling process go a lot quicker. So I'm just doing a quick rough dry. And now I'm ready to start round brushing my hair. I do have a tutorial on this blowout. I'll leave the link for it down below. It's called Lock and Twist Blow Dry. And we are done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below letting me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys on the next one. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and my blog, millenniummama.ca.